speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I always feel slightly discriminated against when I hear passages like that. Why, you might ask? Well, I'm left-handed. And I don't particularly like that the left hand goes to hell. Of course, we know that it's not about left or right. It's about responding to who God is and to who God's family is. And in the passage this morning from Matthew's Gospel, we have this image very, very clearly given to us by Christ of what it means to be the presence of Christ in the world and to respond to Christ. Because to respond to the least of these who are my family is to respond to me. In South Africa, during the time of the 90s and early 2000s, as it is very much today still a reality, HIV was swelling and becoming a real challenge in South Africa. And it is there that South Africa became the country that had the largest number of people living with HIV. At that time, an artist, Colby, painted a picture of Christ's crucifixion. But it's a painting that was seen as very uncomfortable. And the uncomfortability is that Jesus was not painted on a cross as you might anticipate for this crucifixion. Jesus was painted as a man sitting on a hospital bed, covered in carposa sarcoma, the skin cancer that you can develop as part of AIDS, with a drip up. And his death in this instance was not a death by nails on a cross, but the death of being pushed to the margins of society because of HIV. And as striking as that painting was, and as disturbing as many people found it, the painting was taken to St. George's Cathedral in Cape Town, and there it hung for many years. But when you came to the painting and looked just a little closer, then there were words written over the painting. When I was hungry, you did not feed me. When I was naked, you did not clothe me. When I was sick, you did not visit me. When I was in prison, you did not visit me. And so these words that we have read this morning from St. Matthew's Gospel were the words of challenge written to the Church of God as it was facing the reality of HIV in the world. And we as church in South Africa particularly were being challenged to ask, who is my neighbor? Who is Christ to me? And Colby's painting helped us answer that 
This morning we are here on the 1st of January and it's common for many people, they make New Year's resolutions. I'm not sure when the date is scheduled to break those resolutions, but this is usually the day that the resolutions are made. And the passages of scripture that are given to us this morning really help us to refocus our lives and to ask questions about how do we go forward? What will this new year be for us? And I think that they are passages that challenge us to look anew at who it is that we are and who it is that we are in our world. When we encounter this teaching of Christ, it is not for me that many of us are malicious in not responding to the needs of the world, but it is many times that we are ignorant of what goes on around <clears throat> us. Sometimes for self-preservation, sometimes just by not paying attention. I don't believe it to be malicious. But just as that Colby painting to the church was a wake-up call, this passage given to us this morning is our wake-up call to look at the world in which we live. And it is not just about walking from here to the central station and finding someone in need and responding with a cup of coffee or a warm word or responding to some other need they express. It's about the way that we live our political lives. It's about the way in which we work in our offices. It's about the way in which we respond to our family members. It's about the way in which we respond to people that we encounter in the Pendle Talk and in the trains. It's about responding to each individual as if they are the Christ. Because that is the challenge for us, to see each as the Christ and to respond as we would to Christ. In this, that age-old greeting from India for me is always so helpful. Namaste. The God in me responds to the God in you. And that is how this year should be for us. Ecclesiastes says there is a time for all things. Today the time is to open our eyes and see the world around us and respond to the Christ in each other. May God bless you as you seek to find the face of Christ, particularly in those you find uncomfortable, but also in those you love. And may this year, this 2023, also be the year that we bring Christ more closely through our engagement in the world. Happy New Year. May it be a blessed one for you and those you love. Amen. Amen.